to make machine language programs more friendly it's nice to add a basic stub which contains a line with a sys statement on it to start the code and it's easy to do on a vic twenty and the process gives you an insight into how basic programs are stored in memory so uh, we'd like a i'd like to create a basic stub that has a line like this 2020 so the year it's just traditional uh, sys 4110 so 4110 is the location of the machine language program that we want to start so if i create that uh, basic program like that and if i look into uh, if i look into memory using vicmon the uh, the machine language monitor i can have a look at this basic statement and have a look at how it's coded and how it's uh, tokenized sorry so the uh, the start of basic on an unexpanded vic uh, the start of tokenized basic will be at uh, 1001 so if i have a look at 1001 to 1015 say right okay so the first two octets oc10 uh, that represents the next line link, so the next line of BASIC, the next line of tokenized BASIC. So the essentially, essentially the way that BASIC is tokenized or kept in memory is that we have a next line link, which points to the next BASIC line, and then that's followed by uh, a line number, and then we have the tokenized BASIC, and then each BASIC line finishes with a zero, and then we can tell that the end of the basic program has been reached because the next line link is zero. So in this case, we have uh, starting at location 1001, we have octets 0C10. So that means that the next line of basic will be at 100C. And then that's followed by E407, which is, uh, which if we translate that to a 07E4 a hex and then turn that into decimal we'd have the decimal number 4110 which is the start of our machine language program that we want to sys to and then we have 9E which is the tokenized symbol for sys and then that's followed by 20 so on uh, line 1006 so we have 20 which is the base character and then we have 34313130. So that's the, uh, that's representing the numbers 4110 from our assist statement. And then we have on one, on line 100B, we have 00, which is the end of line marker. And then we have the next line link, 0000, which indicates the end of the basic program. Now that we know how this line is tokenized and stored in memory, we can create a basic stub in assembly language to prepend our assembly language programs. So if we look here, I've created a, an assembly language basic stub uh, which, uh, which is written for the XA65 uh, assembler. And we can see at the top line, we have the sys token 9E. And I've created this stub so that it'll work as a PRG file. And therefore, the first two bytes, uh, 0110, are the load address for the program. Now, this load address will only be right for an unexpanded VIC-20. And, uh, and indeed, the start of machine language will only be right for an unexpanded VIC-20. If you have a look at the article, uh, that accompanies this video. Uh, I've shown how to set this up for a number of other configurations such as with a 3K expansion or an 8K expansion and I've also shown how to create a version that's independent of the memory configuration used. So it has a look at, it has a look at location 43 and 44 in memory, uh, finds where the start of, bacon, uh, start of tokenized basic is and then calculates the start of machine language from there. But have a look at the article if you're interested in that. For the moment, 
Uh, we can see that the uh, load address in this example is 0110, or sorry, 1001. And then we um, create the tokenized, we create the basic line. So we have word basic end, which is the next line link. And then we have uh, the line number 2020, and then the sys token, a space, and the start of machine language 4110, and then the end of basic line, and then end of the basic program. Uh, the location 4110 is the next memory address after the end of the basic program on an expanded VIC. So it works out to uh, location 1001, which in which in decimal is 4097. And then the basic stub is 13 bytes long, so 4097 plus 13 equals 4110. So that creates our, uh, our basic stub. And then what some people do uh, is to hide the sys statement and to put a little copyright message in or some other message instead, which I'll quickly show how to do. If we look at this next example, uh, we can see that after we have the, um, the sys token and then the space, we're starting machine language at 4150. So it's a bit further down, and that's because we want to then, after the sys statement, have a colon and then a rem token. So the, we're going to create a rem statement, a space, and then the rem statement essentially just consists of 15 backspaces which covers the text that we've already, that it covers a sys statement. And then we're going to replace that after that with the line um, open parentheses, C close parentheses, 2020, Laurie Woodman. So a little copyright statement. And then if the user lists this program, all they will see is that copyright statement. They won't see the sys statement. But if they run the program, it will run the sys 4150 and start the machine language uh, as we would like. If we now return to the VIC and load the, uh, the assembly language program that I was just showing, the one that has the copyright message in it. Uh, so we'll load that. And I've extended the program a little bit just to add a quick Hello World program, uh, machine language program after it. But if we list the program, and there we are, 2020, copyright 2020, Laurie Woodman. So we can't see the sys statement. If we run it, and there we are, hello world. So uh, all is good with the world. Uh, if you want to have a look at this code, um, a better explanation or a fuller explanation of how it all works, do have a look at the accompanying article. Uh, for the moment, I hope you found this interesting and useful. And uh, have a look at some of our other YouTube videos on the Tech Tinkering channel and some of the other articles on the Tech Tinkering website as well. And please subscribe.